Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Post Mortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. Think of it as smart, not fake. Hey everybody, I'm Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks. Today, we're going to talk to you all about how to fake high-end decor. It's good to know how to fake it on a budget. Absolutely. And everybody's on a budget and even budget smudge it. It is just really smart to decorate this way. We talk a lot about highs and lows and mixing it all in. But today we're going to really dig down deep on how to fake it and make it look really high end. There are some very simple things and simple tips that you can follow. The number one tip, and I think you might agree, Anita, is know what the good stuff really looks like. Yes, you are so correct. This is so important. And that's why you want to spend time looking in some of these high-end magazines, go to some furniture stores, antique stores, be looking on Pinterest. But on Pinterest, there's not really a lot of high-end stuff. So I'm Mm, thinking, yeah. so I don't know that that's where I would really hang out. But used to be in the, in the beginning, A little bit more curated. So you definitely need to find a source of high-end decor to go check it out. Because when you know what it looks like, then you know what you're looking for and you'll be able to get closer to it. But if, if you don't even know what you're looking for, well, then how can you replicate it on a budget? Right. So there's so many great resources for that. Obviously, the internet is terrific. Our podcast is pretty great too, especially with this DTT to finds. You're at least learning the words, so then you'll know what to Google if you're wanting to get a certain look or a certain type of piece of furniture or a certain style. Another thing to look at is magazines, obviously. Now, for years, I passed over Architectural Digest because I thought everything in there is way beyond my wallet (laughs) and maybe just even a little over the top, even if I did have the wallet for it. But in the last several years, I started buying that. I don't have a subscription to that one yet, but I do buy it on the stand or at the grocery store when I see it. And that is a great resource because they take me out of my comfort zone and expose me to things that I might not see in my normal shopping or my online searches. So I would have a look at Architectural Digest if you've never looked at it. Don't be afraid of it. I think some of the articles are really well written. And yeah, it is sort of far flung all over the globe and beautiful, beautiful homes that are very expensive. But at least you're training your eye. Another uh, book that I think is a really wonderful source about styles of furniture, which Anita is so uh, good at sharing with us and is so educated on herself, but Tara Shaw's uh, Soulful Home. I think she kind of stole my name a little bit, but I'm okay with that, Tara. We can share it. (laughs) She dropped the my. Uh, But it's a great book, and I've read it cover to cover and gone back to it as a resource. So that is a terrific book if you really want to learn about different styles of furniture, particularly antiques, and know what you're looking for. So you might not be buying, you know, the Louis the 14th or 16th, like like Tara might be importing from Europe for some of her clients, but you might be able to then find a replica that is a lot more reasonable. What about Milieu Magazine? We mm. both love that magazine and that love would it. be a great source. If you're into French, uh, Country French Magazine by Meredith Publishing, that's a fabulous magazine. And although my home was in that magazine, mm-hmm. uh, my home was the only one that wasn't a very large mansion <laughs> that they featured. So occasionally they have attainable stuff like mine, but most of the stuff is very high end in there. And Veranda is a well, yes. I think, is a great resource. And they kind of go up and down the scale of of price. But I think that they they – 
they strive for a little bit more high end. So another great resource that's just easy to pick up. I think that's one of the more reasonable magazines, oddly enough. Milieu and Veranda, I come in around the seven, eight ninety nine. I always put them back when they're twelve ninety nine. I said I'm not unless I'm in it, I'm not paying twelve ninety or maybe if you're in it, I pay twelve ninety nine or maybe you send me a copy. But anyway, the number one tip, the umbrella tip for everything we're going to talk about today is know what the good stuff really looks like. And that can be in all these different resources that we just talked about and obviously more, but also think about not just furniture, textiles. What does real Belgian linen feel like? Mm -hmm. You know, get a swatch of it. Go to a fabric store. Feel what real velvet feels like. So then if you bump into something that's kind of a poly blend at Home Goods, you'll know if that really feels like the real thing and looks like the real thing. But that's another, I would say, piece of advice is to try to find textiles that are the real thing, that are not synthetic. So I would try to look for things that are real linen, real cotton, real satin or silk, uh, something or, or maybe a rug that's real wool. Those things are going to look more like the real thing. Absolutely. And you can also then buy it just on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is out of order for my tips, but I'm going to dive into this because you just brought that up. I have a very specific tip and it's a, like a little cheaty. So, oh, you know, again, I'm leaning I think in. I said this recently in an episode, don't tell them you heard it here, but you can go to Decorators Best. It's a fabric store online and they will give you for, I think, five bucks, a very large sample of fabric or wallpaper. But with the fabric, it's 17 by 17 inch. So you're going to be making a smaller pillow, but you can make a pillow in a fabric that would cost you like $230 a yard for 10 bucks plus a zipper if you could do it yourself. So do they charge $10 for their samples? Is that what you're saying? There, It's $5 a $5. sample. Okay. So I only like a pillow that has the pattern on both sides. So, oh, okay. So you're putting it on both sides. I'm impressed. So both sides, but you can make, it's a bit smaller, you know, in, in an ideal world, maybe your pillow is 20 by 20, but you can make a bit smaller pillow. Oh my goodness. I am so excited because you know, I'm a sewer. So I know. So it's really just your I'm time. To check this one out. Mm-hmm. So I'll put the link to Decorators Best and they're very nice people. Uh, you can even use a different back if you wanted, but I do like a pillow that has the same pattern on both sides. So that's a little cheater. Now, why I would suggest you do that is because you're actually getting the high end. You're getting the Schumacher. You're getting the high end fabric, but you're not paying a lot for it. As I said, you're making a bit smaller pillow, but that is going to really elevate maybe even your IKEA sofa. You know, you you chuck a couple of Schumacher pillows on there with nice inserts, and that's going to elevate the whole look. So what is the name of it again? Oh, you really like this idea. <laughs> I'm, I'm, hey, I am checking it out as soon as we're done talking. <laughs> it's Decorator's Best. You've probably okay. been on their site. It's one of the big I fabric stores. No, I haven't seen that one. Oh, so I'm yeah, check it out. Check them out. Check them out. They have all the, the really big names. In fact, I may have just ordered two more. Well, three more, actually, because I had one oh, swatch of the um, the iconic leopard of, of Schumacher, which is a great fabric to work with, with a swatch or a sample, because it's kind of an overall pattern. So the issue is, with this little cheat, is that you're, they're going to cut you a sample, but you may not get, you know, the cabbage roses smack in the middle. Uh, so if you choose more of an overall pattern, it really doesn't matter. Oh, yes. I remember the issue with bespoke decor. There was a fabric that had a bird on it, and Mm -hmm. everyone wanted the bird. And I think someone ended up with a pillow that didn't have the bird on it. It was a big problem. Got to have the bird in the middle. That's right. So that is an excellent point. Uh, So, yeah, be careful when you're looking at these fabrics that it might not line up where the most important part of the pattern is in the center for a pillow. But Yeah, and, and, you know, and you're cheating this. So, you know, maybe you put that one... And that's the back side of the pillow. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you'll get a better one for the front. Well, yeah. m- my tip is to put a wow piece in each room. 
And so the wow piece might be expensive. It might not. So, I mean, you would have to spend some money on this wow piece. But once you have the wow piece in the room, that is your focus for you, for people coming in the room. And then it's so much easier to kind of cheat and put less expensive things around them because the focus is on the wow piece. And I will tell you, I know this works because when I first started collecting French uh, antiques, I had people come over and they kept talking about my French home. And I'm thinking, my French home? I have one <laughs> antique piece of furniture. But oh, isn't that be- interesting? But it was a beautiful French armoire in the foyer. So everyone came past it and it was you know, very elegant and kind of hard to miss. But that's what they remembered of my house. And they said, oh, she's got a French house. One piece of furniture for the whole house. And that's what they remembered. Interesting. Now I'm going to rift off that. The entry, you said that this piece was the in the entry. Yes. So, and outside your door and in your foyer, it really counts. People remember what they first see. If you want to achieve this high-end look, then start at your front door. Don't have dead plants. Don't have Chosky's. You know, maybe don't have those little flags, you know, <laughs> with like a sun on it or a watering can or something. Go high end. Get two nice containers with beautiful plants on them to flank your door. If you don't have room for two, do one. Or simply do a lantern. If you don't have room for anything, keep it really simple. Get a really nice doormat. Start at the outside. And if your front door needs a fresh coat of paint, do that. A lacquered black probably goes with 90% of the homes out there. And it's so sharp. It's so classic. And it definitely says high end. And then carry that feel into your entryway. And you can make it very simple, but don't have it cluttered. And make sure that there is some piece in there that is really memorable, as, as Anita had mentioned with her French armoire. Right. So if you don't have room for furniture in the foyer, you could put a wow piece of artwork in there or a some other piece that doesn't take up floor space, maybe a gorgeous rug. I mean, there's so many other things you can put in there that don't require a large uh, footprint for the item. And in general, stick with some neutrals because neutrals are always going to look classic calm, and high-end. Think of the classic cashmere camel coat or even even wool camel colored coat. That is just a classic. It would elevate a pair of jeans and a white t-shirt and just look really sophisticated. So instead of going with a lot of different colors, really drill down on your palette. And I really think it will make a big difference in the way your home is perceived by you and by everybody else. Obviously, most importantly, that it's perceived by you. Going back to the Tara Shaw book I mentioned, you'll see all her colors are neutrals. And it is so impressive. And just everything about each page and every photo in that book, it just screams high end. And maybe not screams, quietly whispers high end, (laughs) right? Because it's just beautiful. The neutrals really say high end. Some people and really great designers can pull off a lot of different colors. But if you're not there in your decorating life, and if you're not there with your budget to make all those pieces high end, then go with the neutrals. You're so correct with that. Because sometimes people pick patterns that aren't a high-end pattern. But when you're picking neutrals, it's not something that's going to go out of style. I mean, a white pillow is a white pillow. It's always going to be in style. So when you go with the neutrals, it has a clean, classic look. And this is the sort of thing that it's kind of hard to mess up, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's, it's, it's harder to mess that up than once you start adding a bunch of colors that's when things can go awry. Mm-hmm. Somebody who's very talented could pull it off, but it definitely requires more talent. Now, uh, I'm going to rift off what you said with the neutrals and add in limited color palette because that's also something that you can do. If you say, I don't want neutrals, I want color, you can go with color. But another way to have it look high end is limit the main colors in the room so that you only have two, maybe three main colors. And that is amazing what that will do to a room to elevate it and make it look very coordinated. And again, you don't have to do this. It's just something that really helps keep it 
more high-end looking. And the thing that it does is when you just have a few colors and those are throughout the room, it feels like it's coordinated, but not in a matchy-matchy way, but just in a way that it just is a pleasing effect for your eye. And it just feels like it all works together and it's cohesive. And that's why that, that works. And it just pulls in different styles. If you have the same color throughout the room, then it's all going to feel like it goes together. Absolutely. And you mentioned white. White subway tile. It's not boring. No, 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 no. It's a classic. It's never going to look cheap. And it's never going to be dated. And you can get it in the aisle at Home Depot. And it's (laughs) because it is cheap. (laughs) But but it's never going to look bad. White subway tile is never going to let you down. And it's going to look high end. You can have a very simple bathroom with the white subway tile and it's going to look high end. Well, we went with a lot of subway tile in our house. And in the bathrooms, I used a white subway tile for that very reason. And I spent money on other things, but I decided I was not going to be spending a lot of money on the tile because I know a white subway tile has a clean, crisp look that is a classic that's always going to look good. So I felt like I can skimp on the cost there and I'll put it, spend my budget, blow my budget somewhere else. <laughs> blow your budget, yeah. <laughs> Use your budget. Spend where it really counts. Don't go crazy on the tile and you don't have to go get Ann Sachs white subway tile and spend I can't even imagine, you know, like twenty four ninety nine per tile when you can get them for sixty nine cents at Home Depot. Nobody's going to really know the difference when they're white subway tiles and they're on the wall. And I don't even like the ones that are a little jazzier with the bevels and whatnot. I really mm-hmm. like the simple right. subway Me too. tiles. Me too. Yeah, I so agree. put your money into your sofa. Put your money where it really counts. Buy yourself a really special dining room table, something like that. So today we're talking about areas, places, items in your home where you can really get away with faking high end. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well. And we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 
and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. As I said in the beginning, it's really not even faking. It's just being smart, which is what we were just discussing. Anita decided instead of pouring a lot of money into tile that maybe A, she was going to get tired of, or B, wasn't, it was just going to be maybe a little too much for the room. She decided to use the budget elsewhere and put it into either antiques or textiles or other wonderful pieces of furnishings in her home. That's smart. Why, thank you. <laughs> but, but, but I think you're absolutely right. You, it's part of this is just being very careful about where you knowing when where to splurge and where to conserve your budget. So I have another idea to save some money. If you really want a hardwood floor, but that is absolutely not going to be in your budget, and you have some carpet that you really can't stand, then I would suggest you go with a high end vinyl floor that looks like wood or a laminate that looks like real wood. And you know what? Just invite people over after dark, keep the lights dim, use some big <laughs> rugs, you're golden. In a general sense, keep the line simple. Less is more, less stuff looks more high end. That's super easy. If you think you've got too much in a room, take it out. Just doing that might elevate the whole look and give it more of a high end look. Going all white with your bedding will take the room up exponentially. Color is great, pattern is great in the bedroom, but really think about it. High-end hotels, they're all white. All the bedding is white and it's beautiful. And maybe your sheets are from Target, but they're white. But maybe those three euros that you have running across the front of the bed as your decorative pillows are linen. And maybe that's where you put a little money into it. Or maybe they just look like they're linen because you already know what Belgian linen feels like in your hand and you tripped upon something at home goods that feels the same. And that's just going to bring the whole room up. Speaking again of textiles, wool blankets, they really make a difference and you can get them for not that much money. Real wool blankets. You, you don't have to spend you know two three hundred dollars on a wool blanket. I've seen them at IKEA for a really good price point. But wool will make a difference. Those cheapo acrylic throws, and we all know what I'm talking about, oh, right? Yes. They're tempting, right? Because mm-hmm, they're mm-hmm. like $12.99 in TJ Maxx or something, and they come on those plastic hangers. You know, everybody's seen those. Right. And like you have your eye turned, you're like, that's only $12.99. What a fun color. But the, they just look cheap. Well, you're correct. And that's, again, the, when I'm looking at those, if I see something I like, that's really pretty. I look and it's almost always, it's wool or cotton or linen. It's not going to be uh, synthetic. So look at that fabric content uh, because that's another clue as to the quality. And you're right. I remember buying a synthetic blanket a long time ago. And then I hadn't used it in a while. And I pulled it out of the linen cabinet and it had just broken down into a million little pieces. Has that ever yeah. happened to you? It was so disgusting. I mean, disintegrated? It disintegrated. And when I oh, saw wow. that, I mean, I just thought I I just thought I can't even do this anymore. So I if it's not cotton or wool, just it's just a better look. And I have some linen blankets too that are very nice. The idea of having this sort of synthetic what have you fabric next to your skin is just not so great. I mean, even if it's just draped over the edge of your sofa, at some point, somebody's going to pull up and and put it on themselves and read a book or watch TV. So try to stick with natural fabrics in general. But that doing that, you don't have to have 12 throws, just have one or two Mm -hmm, really good ones and look around because you can really get them at a great price point. Now I'm going to check out Ikea for their wool blankets. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely do that. White dishes. That will Mm. elevate your table. You can get white dishes at Target. You can probably get white dishes at the dollar store. I don't know. Yeah, Mm. everywhere. Max Home Goods, right. White dishes is the way I go. If you open my cabinets, they're pretty much all white. If you just do all white, it just looks so fabulous. It's so high end. Let's say there were some other dishes you wanted that were very expensive. 
just buy the dinner dishes and then you can do the white salad plates and the white cups mm-hmm. and saucers. I mean, there's so much you can do to mix white with other dishes. So that's a way to extend and not have to spend so much money. I have some Port Marion dishes and I actually mix them with white, uh, the Port Marion Botanic Garden, which has a nice white background. Those blend so well with white dishes. So they work beautifully together on the table. Oh, yeah, that would look great. And if you like transferware, I mean, that comes in so many different colors. That works really well with white dishes. So as Anita's saying, you could just get the dessert or the salad or just the little, the smaller dish to go on top. Animal prints, very classic, very high end. If you go through lots of decor books or magazines, I am sure over the years you have seen animal prints mixed in everywhere. They are kind of a neutral and oh, designers yeah. use them that way. So you can use them that way. That's a great idea. Another thing to do is add an antique to your house. It doesn't have to be furniture. It could be an accessory, an antique clock, an antique silver tray. Um, you know, I love the hotel silver is a fun thing to add to a room. Uh, I have some old silver trophies that are just all worn and have lots of patina. And I use those to put plants in. So there's a lot of things that you can add that are, and again, that's the sort of thing that people's eye are going to be drawn to that, not to the $5 white plate you have. Mm -hmm. And as far as furniture goes, I love adding a French chair to just about any room. And it goes with almost any kind of furniture, any style, unless it's a big, chunky, bulky furniture, it's going to work with it. And that's the sort of thing. It doesn't even have to be a chair that you can sit in. You can buy one that maybe is a little wobbly and just put some books in it and use it more as a display and not maybe a place for people to sit. You can buy new French chairs or the antique ones. I prefer the antique ones for just kind of an accent piece in a room. Anything antique is going to add a very unique feel to your room. And remember when I talked about how people are always asking where I got something when it's always antique? You know, Mm -hmm. I said that a few episodes ago. Well, this morning, Someone was desperate to find the chairs I have in my dining room. She's like, I've got to know your source. And I said, well, it was a shipment from France at an antique auction I went to. And I've never seen those again. So that's how you can get a very one-of-a-kind look for your room. Right. And very high-end for sure. How about framing your art? If it's in an old cruddy frame, then maybe change it up. If it is a canvas piece that the frame just kind of bringing it down, the frame just doesn't look high end, you could just take the frame off. I love canvas pieces that are unframed and you could lean them on a mantle or elsewhere. But if you've got some nice art and it's not framed well, framing can really make a big difference. There is some designer... It might have been David Hicks, and we were just recently talking about India Hicks. I think one of his quotes is that everything looks better in a frame. Now, I'm not 100% in agreement with that because I do like some unframed art. I do too. But if the frame is bad, it can really bring the whole piece down. So true. So true. I I agree. you, You could look for antique frames. I mean, that's a little bit of a DIY trying to fit them with the art that you already have, but it may be worth that because maybe you can get a wonderful frame kind of for a song and then you could figure out how to maybe remount or mat your artwork and get it to fit in there properly. I think that really makes a big difference. And along those same lines, adding some trim Trim is not that expensive. And if you're doing something like a lampshade, you could get really high-end trim, like we're saying at these really high-end swatches or sample pieces of material. You could get some really high-end trim, maybe less than a yard of it, and trim out a drum lampshade or put trim on something else, just sort of bringing it up a little bit. Talking about trim... What about buying one of those Billy bookcases Mm -hmm. at Ikea or some other place and then using crown molding and baseboard molding from Lowe's or Home Depot and make it look built in? 
for oh, yeah. a and wonderful. There's so many people that have done that. So you can get so much inspiration on YouTube and other places for that. That is a great idea. And along the same lines, if you have a home that doesn't have a lot of innate character, you know, maybe it was a spec home or a builder grade or, you know, it's just a little bit simpler. You can add gorgeous wainscoting to any room certainly works beautifully in a dining room, uh, but you could add it to any room. Think about that. It's not very expensive. If you have uh, someone in your family or yourself that's handy, then again, it's just the time to do it. And you can get these pieces and you kind of make your own. You can just get molding. It doesn't have to be beadboard or shiplap. You could do something even. That's because that's more of a farmhouse Any it look anyway. Maybe you want to do something that is even a little more high end than that and just do simple panels with maybe a nice uh, molding on the top and the bottom. You could make some squares or rectangles and cuts out. It could be really beautiful and really elevate the look of the room. Yes. And here's another tip that takes a boring room to a wow room. There's a blogger and she just painted her living room a very rich color like Hale Navy Mm -hmm. and and hung some very large botanical prints on the wall. It's stunning. It is absolutely stunning. And I know it was not a big expense to do that. I'm so excited to talk about my crush, but I know we have some other stuff to talk about first. So Anita, tell us about the challenge today. Okay, on your our DTT living room challenge, we're on step seven. So on this step, you are going to develop your wish list for the living room. So make a wish list of the furniture you want. So think about any tables, coffee table, side table, your console, sofa, armchairs, cabinets. Just jot down all your wish list. And so what we want is just the wish list of everything you want for your space. And right now, don't worry about the space or budget. We'll kind of narrow down that list later. So that's all you need to do for the challenge for now. Okay, great. And what's the defines for today? Color washing. I thought this would be an interesting term to define because it is something that we see a lot of places. This is a decorative painting technique where a thin glaze, or maybe it's a water-based wash, is applied over the base coat of paint to create an effect, or it's a subtle layer of, of color. And a lot of times you might have seen this maybe on a deck where you can see the grain through but there's a color on it. So, mm-hmm. I mean, we've, we've certainly done this uh, on one of our decks. So this is something that, but you can also see that sometimes people do it on a wall where mm-hmm. there's a base coat and then there's a glaze that they put on top of that. So it's, it's kind of a decorating technique that you may see some places. I've never tried any painting techniques like that on a wall. So would the glaze then sort of be in the same family as your base color? Well, it doesn't have to, not necessarily, uh, but I mean, you do have to be careful because once you put one color on top, it's going to change the look of the paint color underneath. Right. So I would not advise you just starting out without testing a small place first yes, to make sure you're going to end up because, you know, as you know, when you add two different colors together, you're going to get a little different look. So it is. it can be dicey. Most of the time I see it on, on wood on just raw wood so you right. can't see the grain through but it's an interesting technique but go ahead clean out your closet then head straight to quince i love every item quince offers from wardrobe to decor and i can really recommend their ultra stretch super wide leg pant at 49.90 the price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. 
Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add DOS to your wellness regime. DOS is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash dtt and use the code dtt that's dose daily dot co dot co slash dtt and use the code dtt i have wanting to hear about your crush so let's hear it my crush i am so excited to share this with everyone today so i sort of fell down this internet rabbit hole i think i started a House and Garden UK, and I don't know how I got here, but I ended up on this site of the ICAA, the Institute of Classical Architecture and Art. They interview designers and architects, I assume, about various topics, and particularly if they're having a book come out or event. So I tripped upon this almost 40-minute video interview with Christopher Spitzmiller. He is a very talented designer. He's also a very, very talented ceramicist. It was so interesting to listen to his path and how he started with ceramics and then how he ended up being pulled in by Michael Smith into the White House. He was an intern, but then he was making these lamps and Hillary and Michelle and all these people were buying his lamps and then his, then he became friendly with all these designers but I don't want to give it all away. Suffice to say that he is so charming and I was laughing out loud particularly when he showed a picture of the before of his house and he was like nothing says home like a dumpster and that's of course what my house looked like <laughs> when we got here and you may be familiar with his recent book, A Year at Cloverbrook Farm. It's a beautiful book. Probably a lot of you have seen it. It probably comes up on your suggested books when you're on Amazon or something like that. But this interview came about because he had recently released his book. So he talks a lot about his home, which is Cloverbrook Farm in upstate New York. We see the progression of that, but we also, as I mentioned, learn about him and how he ended up where he is today. It's a wonderful interview. I was watching it this morning, early in the morning, and I thought, I can't watch a 39-minute video. Like, I don't have time for this. At 38 minutes, I was still like enthralled. <laughs> so wow. It, wow. it made me stop and really just chill out and enjoy it. I think you all will love it. So I will put the link to it in the show notes. And then I would maybe bookmark this particular site because they apparently have a lot of videos and I didn't go into their back catalog. There's probably a lot of interesting people already on there, but I think that they'll have others coming up as well that you really might be interested in. So it's the ICAA. Okay, that sounds exciting. Mm -hmm. Well, my crush is something you can also watch. <laughs> but did you know there's a new Downton Abbey movie coming out? No, maybe not. I, I The Gilded Age I have been watching, but that's a different thing. Right, right. So this is, the, uh, this is Downton Abbey, A New Era. So I think it'll be in movie theaters, I'm guessing. 
but it's it looks very interesting. You know, Violet Crawley, who's the Dowager Countess to you, uh, she mm-hmm. has a villa in the south of France that the family didn't know about, so they end up going down there and checking that out. And then the other part, the other plot point in the movie is that some, I guess, American film stars come there. I don't know if they're American, but anyway, the film stars come there and film a movie at Downton Abbey. So, oh. Yeah, so the staff's kind of starstruck. So it's like a movie out. within a movie. Yes, yes, yes. So I thought that was some pretty fun, and I thought, ooh, I'd like to see, I bet they've got some gorgeous interiors in that south of France villa. Oh, I bet so. You know, so, I don't know if I ever told you this. It made me think of it when I just said movie within a movie. I was in a movie within a movie once. <laughs> what were you in? I was I was a featured extra with absolutely no lines in a movie called Sweet Liberty. It was uh, made by Alan Alda. And I got to hold Michael Caine's hand. Oh, I think I remember that. I don't think I saw it, but I, I think I know which movie you're talking about. Oh, that's great. Okay, well, so the Down Abbey movie is coming out May 20th here in the U.S., so if you're interested, go check it out. Hey, today was so much fun. I love faking it. Me too, me too, and it's so fun to have this high-end look when you know, and you're mm-hmm. the only one, that you didn't spend as much as people think you did. And Exactly. You know, Kelly and I love saving money, so that is always something that we're thinking about. And, you know, we didn't really mention this, but also you need to find some great sources for things like resale shops, consignment stores, you know, look around. There's going to be some great sources where you can save some money on some fabulous things. So just one last tip there for you. Oh, they just keep pouring I out know, I, We can't stop ourselves. Can't stop. I got to turn off the spout. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. So I got to stop it now. <laughs> Remember, We're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult. We can't wait to talk to you. (music) 